Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today is July 6th, 2020. We actually have ourselves a chunky little show. We have a regular uh, assortment of uh, oddities and fun. And then also this week, there was a show held in Shizuka. Normally it's a pretty quiet affair that we don't ever mention because there are the two big uh, trade shows that go on in Japan. However, this year, due to the Rona, uh, neither one of them are going to happen. Obviously, the Shizuka Hobby Show was canceled. Uh, that should have taken place in, or taken place, took in place, ugh, taken place in May. And the All Japan Model and Hobby Show, which usually falls in late October or early November, has also been canceled already for this year. So this uh, little show uh, ended up producing some stuff that uh, will actually probably be some of the manufacturers' uh, fall. Uh, announcements way in advance, although I expect uh, a few companies will probably announce a few other things. But we'll get to that in a second. We have kit announcements of the normal sort to get to. Uh, first up, the July straight reissues from Aoshima. Somehow I missed this when I was putting the list together. Uh, so these weren't on the July, uh, you know, monthly recap video either. These are just straight reissues of stuff just to restock. Uh, 91 Toyota Hilux Surf, which is what we got here, of course got here as the forerunner. Uh, the 06... Honda Odyssey Absolute, the 99 Mazda MX-5, that again, second gen Miata, this Aoshima kit, the only way to get a left-hand drive second gen uh, MX-5. Uh, it was a kit that was out of production since the early 2000s, came back last year, um, and if you, you know, are trying to build the MX-5 collection across the spectrum, it is the only second gen left-hand drive kit there is. Um, you have, of course, Ravel and Tamiya for the first gen. You have Fujimi for the third gen. Tamiya again with the new MX-5, but the second gen one is only available in this kit. <laughs> you buy it while supplies last. Uh -huh. uh, 95 Toyota Hilux Long Bed Lift, which, of course, is a single cab, not the crew cab, not the four-door, uh, but on the sort of big swamper tire, monster truck uh, style uh, suspension. A reissue of the 74 Lamborghini Countach along with its photo etch set. A reissue of the Pangani Warrior and a reissue of the Liberty Walk Kenamari Works four-door Skyline, which is, I think, the second kit in that series that was issued. Now, the other thing we have on the announcement side of things is Aoshima's October releases. Now you see why I found the July stuff, because I was looking right down the October stuff, but ooh, crap, I missed something. <laughs> so October is going to bring you a number of just straight reissues from the model car and the two model car line, but there are uh, probably about three or four things here that qualify into the modified reissue or the long ago and never seen again type of release. So, just plowing through the list here, you're getting a reissue of the 1991 Nissan Laurel Medalist Club S, a reissue of the 1992 Mazda AZ1, probably better known to a lot of people as the AutoZam, reissue of the 91 Honda Beat, reissue of the 96 Mazda RX-7 FD3S, reissue of the 79 Toyota Corolla GTDX, that's the kit that can be built with either trim level, uh, reissue of the 73 Volkswagen Beetle 1303S and the 75 Volkswagen Beetle Cabrio 1303S. I would please like a Aoshima and uh, Italeri ran these kits this last year as well. Um, to please take that tooling, find a nice, quiet, non-polluting spot of water to put it into, submerge it to never be seen again. I'm so sick and tired of seeing that I'm a Beetle. It is truly a terrible kit. And, I mean, it's not like you can't build it. You just will be like, what the hell is that? Is that supposed to be a beetle when you're done with it? <laughs> so, yeah. I cannot, under any circumstances, strenuously not recommend that model kit more. I've had one. It's not a personal, it's not an opinion of an opinion of somebody's review of it. I've had one. It's terrible. I got rid of it. Uh, there are much better beetle kits out there. Yes, none of them are super beetles. It would probably behoove somebody to tool up a 1303S out of one of the other existing beetle kits, but in the meantime, that's really not a suitable substitute. Anyway, uh, reissue of the Mazda Sport Spec GT Concept FD3 SRX7, uh, reissue of the Nissan Silvia S15 Rodex style, and a reissue of the 1994 Honda Hilux Double Cab Lift Up. So this is the four-door version of the kit we were just talking about. It's coming out in July. Uh, reissue of the Initial D86 Truno Project D-Car. It's going to have some new box art for the new, the 
new initial D line, and also a reissue of the initial DFC 3S RX-7 that Takahashi Ryosuke drove. Again, a reissue of kit with new, some new box art. The long ago and never going to see this kit again reissue this month, is, or for October, I should say, not this month, but October, is the 1966 MGB Club Rally Kit. Now, a lot of people don't even realize that there's the 68 MGB streetcar and then there's a 74 mgb streetcar the one with a urethane if you have an old enough model kit uh urethane bumpers i don't know there's urethane but they spelled it urethane they didn't put the h in the in the name uh those two kits were reissued last year with the 74 with its tool with uh its newly tooled uh wheels which actually have been in the kit since 1994 but for some reason were never released with those wheels in the kit which is just a weird oddity that it went through all of the various releases through Airfix and Ravel of Germany and everybody else, and it never nobody ever ran the the molds with the wheels in them. But Aoshima did last time. So anyway, the Club Rally is part of a two race car set series of this that were done back in 1993 that have never been reissued. One is a one is sort of a street uh, or a not street but sort of an SCCA race car type of thing, and the other one is this Club Rally. The decals for it are from the marathon route uh, sort of. You know, rally uh, that that is. Of course, that's all all you know, asphalt rally. This kit has a hard top, which the uh, street kits do not have. Also, has a set of what look like uh, mini light wheels, which the street car doesn't have. Along with some other rally of uh, club rally type of thing, like big spotlights for the front bumper and things like that. Um, but again, that kit has not been reissued ever since the 1993 initial release. So that is something that most people probably thought they would never see again. And well. Wait long enough, and since Aoshima is not really tooling anything new anymore, for, other than some odd and, and JDM stuff, um, yeah, I mean they got the they're they're scraping the bottom of that of that re, of that tooling barrel. So this is something else that uh, they managed to dig up. I would expect probably maybe before the end of the year, maybe in early 2020, you see the uh, sort of SCCA racing version of it show back up as well. Uh, another modified reissue will be the 82 Nine Hours of Kalami Nissan R30 Skyline Turbo. If you're sitting there going, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's a, there's a model kit of that. Yes, there is. This is going to have some additional uh, PE put into it to, I guess, help modify the chassis to be more correct. Uh, take it a little more away from the toy uh, variety. First of all, it's based on motorized kit. Second of all, it's based on the uh, Super Silhouette Group 5 Japan style racing, which has a completely sort of different set of splitters and things like that than the Group 5 that ran outside of Japan did. So that's going to sort of, again, add some... PE pieces to make the chassis more prototypically correct for the car. It's an interesting investment uh, at this point. Uh, and then two modified reissues, the 91 Nissan R34 four-door Skyline. That's, of course, the kit that just came out as the U-Race Type R. Uh, also has two streetcar versions of it, a, what, a 98 and a 2001. Uh, this is going to be now made into a police car. Uh, most of the parts are carryovers from the other police car parts that they have from the early 2000s, but there are a few uh, bits and pieces that are new to this kit to turn it into a police car. And then the lastly will be a 2014 Toyota Pro Box, what they're calling Road Patrol. So if you live in an eastern state or even a, a midwestern state, because Kansas and Oklahoma have turnpikes as well, most uh, of the eastern states have what are known as motorist assistance patrols. And, and you see these also in large metropolitan areas. New York has it, Jersey, uh, like Philly has it, Boston has it, uh, where and uh, George, the Georgia uh, DOT heroes that run around Atlanta on the, on the beltway down there are these motorist assistance patrols. Your car breaks down, they come out, they try to fix it. If not, they get your tow. Big vehicle put out behind your car with an arrow board and, you know, painted like a usually like a lemon or something like that with flashing lights all over to keep you from getting run into on the highway same sort of principle apparently exists in japan uh the pro box is that sort of weird cross sort of crossover thing where it's not really a car it's not really a van and uh, this is going to have the big aero board that was put on top of the roof of the toyota high ace van that was the traffic police car that came out about six months ago same little topper if you will and then uh some uh 
tr I was going to Trident, but that's not the right word. Some Chevron. Ah, there. The Chevron decals for the front and the back of it. Paint it yellow. The Chevron decals are red and white. It'd be really cool if they could make them sort of metallic red and white to make them look like the reflectiveness that they have in real life, but I'm not sure that's possible with the decal tech that uh, Aosha may have access to. But anyway, that one is coming back out again. Again, it's just a minor modified reissue of the thing. I, I, the, for the Pro Box being what it is and the way it is, I'm surprised we haven't gotten an earlier version of the Pro Box. I'm surprised we haven't gotten any VIP versions of the Pro Box. I certainly thought that those would be something we would see before a Mazda Familia van and now this sort of motor assistance patrol thing. But it is what it is. You can't change it. I know that is what it is. It's a verbal crush for me when it comes to this kind of stuff. But really, I can't control it. I just report it. So, while we're on the topic of new things and new things from Japan, they held, again, this past week, a uh, event called the Shizuka, it's like the Shizuka Hobby Business Conference, an educational consortium, I think is the actual official title of it. And it's held in Shizuka Square, which is a sort of public, little public venue where a lot of the model manufacturers, uh, Put out on display some of the newer kits that they're gonna that they're releasing. Um, I believe it changes month to month, quarter to quarter, something like that. From the videos I've seen of people go through it, it's not the same display all the time. Uh, because Shizuka, of course, is where all of your major model manufacturers are based: Tamiya, Hasegawa, uh, Ebro, Aoshima, Fujimi, along with fine molds and other and non-automotive model companies in Japan. And again, normally this is just sort of a event for kids, for the business of the hobby, uh, recruiting employment type of thing. Like, hey, you know, you have a CAD degree, why don't you come design the model kits kind of thing. But this year, because the shows have all been canceled, this turned into a legitimate, hey, look at these kits we're going to make <laughs> kind of show. And it actually had a little bit of uh, oomph to it, I guess would be the best way to put it. So Tommy was on display with some new stuff. Uh, it's all just... Reissues, a little bit of modified reissues. Hasegawa has a brand new kit we're going to talk about here in a second. And then uh, Platz Nunu was there as well with some upcoming stuff that, we, that I want to talk about. So, looking at this uh, stuff, we'll start at the Tamiya booth first with the straight sort of reissues. First up, you get a reissue of this, which on my screen for some reason isn't showing up. That's fantastic, but I'm sure it'll be in the video. The 120th scale Fiat 131 rally car. Um, it's a uh, just a straight reissue of that kit. I'm gonna try a different picture. Maybe I'll get an image this time because <laughs> I need to see like bigger versions of what I'm talking about. There we go. Now it's working on my end. You will never know because other than the fact that I'm talking about it, because it'll just be in the video. <laughs> but another issue is this: the 112 scale Porsche 935, the Martini Racing uh, livery. This is no shock at all for anybody who knows how these kits work, because the 934 and the 935 are basically the same car. Uh, just the 935 is a rebodied, more aerodynamic version of the vehicle. And within the kits, all of the underside of the model, pretty much the interior, the the suspension, the engine, all that stuff are carryovers, and the, and the body is new. So this is sort of the one sort of missing 1976-1977 Porsche kit. So that's getting a re reissue. And also, on the 124 scale thing, we did get an announcement of two things here. One is the Lotus Super 7 Series 2. Now, this kit came out back in the 80s. Uh, it was in the catalog for a while. It's out of production now. And getting one can be, you know, a little iffy here and there. This is going to be just more or less a straight reissue of the kit, but it's going to have a, a fret of PE added to it, some paper seat belts, which I'm not a huge fan of because they look like paper seat belts, and also some turn metal uh, air inlets, carbs. They're not so much carbs, but just air inlets for the carbs and new decals as well as you see on this sort of secondary screen here and so that will be getting a reissue and because it has these things added to it it has a new kit number so there's that and then also a reissue while we're on the lotuses of the lotus europa special now this is going to actually have some new parts put into it it's going to basically have the same pe and the same turn metal uh air inlets and things like that the paper seat belts are back in this kit as well uh but it's going to have this these the wing and the sort of mini light style wheels uh, put into it to make the Johnny Player special version of the Lotus Europa, which is very cool. Um, I think there is an aftermarket set for the newer 
Fujimi Lotus Europa, which is nowhere near as good as the Tamiya one is. Tamiya one being a full detail kit and everything, obviously, since you're getting metal, uh, turn metal air intakes for the carbs. But uh, it's very interesting to see them, at this point, reissue the kit with these parts added to it. So, I mean, it's cool. I mean, it probably cost them, let's see, one, two, three, four, there's eight. 12, 15, 16 parts here. So it's about, uh, what, maybe a $5,000 investment on counting the PE and the decals and all that stuff to reissue the kit with these new parts added to it. Um, so that's, I mean, I know a lot of people will probably have a new tool automotive kit, and I'm going to raise my hand with you because uh, new, new is always good. But uh, that's a pretty nice modification of an existing kit that came out in 1999. Um, so that's very fun. Also, Tommy is going to be releasing a new figure set, which they're calling the Campus Friends 2. Now, this is sort of a modern version of the original Campus Friends. You may recall that kit came out in the 1980s as a 1980s scooter, some 1980s figures. So this has been updated to 2020, if you will. You have some new figures here. They're in some more modern clothing. I've seen a few people on a forum go completely, totally ballistically ape crap about the fact that those people, those two girls are taking a selfie because, oh my God, people are cell phones. <laughs> You know, they're probably posting to the forum on a cell phone. And this little scooter that you get here is a Yamaha Vino, and it's a brand, it's a, you know, 2019, 2020 scooter. So it's a new scooter, got the vintage look like a Vespa, like the new Vespas have, but it is a new uh, scooter in, in that sense. And then over at Hasegawa, they announced this new tool kit. It is a A70, or third gen Toyota Supra. This is very exciting for me personally, because I've been harping for years now that we need a good new modern A70 Super Tool. Um, the two Super Kits that exist, the Tamiya one that was just released with the uh, sort of a background reissue with the new Gazoo Racing Supra, as well as the Fujimi one, which I don't think has been out for probably five or six years now, uh, are were both tooled in 1986. With the exception of the one release of the high mecha version of the Supra that, that Fujimi did, which also came with... Uh, I think the body's always had the Targa top uh, indents for it, but anyway, it was designed to be a Targa top Supra, and the, the high mecha kits, for people who don't know, had a full detail engine in them, as well as a different chassis to allow that full detail engine to be put into it, because the, the Fujimi Supra is like a $12 model kit, it's very basic curbside, otherwise... Uh, the Tamiya one is really a $12 model. It's a very basic curbside as well. This is going to be, uh, I'm sure, several different versions of it. This is coming out of the 3.0 GT Turbo Limited, which was the top of the line A70 Supra back in the day. Uh, I have no doubt that there's an early version, a late version, maybe even a Group A JTC version, which would be, again, something that would be so very appreciated by me personally. Uh, because, again, that is something that has not been out for a while. We did get Tommy's streetcar reissue, again, with the, with the new Super here in early 2020, but the Group A racing one, the one that has the Minolta car on the box art, has never been reissued back from 1987. It's a pricey model kit at this point. It's a, sort of a half-measure model kit at this point, because it, uh, it's half a streetcar, half a race car. Fujimi's kit has been reissued more recently than that, but again, it's even worse in terms of it being half a race car, half a street car. So having one that Hasegawa can design, like the R31 Skyline um, and other model kits that you could clearly tell have a race car sort of baked into them, like the way the 2002 uh, BMW did as well, would be, you know, again, much appreciated if you could make a legitimate full-on race car version. Now, people will see the hood outline on the on the thing being cut out there and be like, ooh, it has an engine. No, it doesn't have an engine, but the hoods are different depending on the trim level and the years and what kind of engine it had and stuff like that. That, again, just an ease of access for them to be able to retool just the hood, not the whole top half of the body core. So that will be coming out in December as of right now. So that's going to be their, their fall fourth quarter kit. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, I like to have it sooner, but I'm good with that. And then over at the Platts new new table, we got a few new things that were added, or at least a few new things that were shown. And for some reason, this is something else that I can't see when I <laughs> am trying to load my my vision view, my uh, JPEG viewer in the background here. First up, you have the uh, reissue of the McLaren MP4 II series of kits. This is going to be the 2C. We've talked about this before. This is the one-off Portugal Grand Prix car that ran with the yellow Marlboro livery, 
Uh, the, there will no be no Marlboro livery straight in the box. Um, you know how that works. It will probably be in the detail upset. The detail upset is going to have a whole bunch of carbon fiber in it in addition to the photo etch. So my guess is somewhere tucked in the back, they'll never admit to it, we won't know until it comes out, but probably tucked in the back are going to be the Marlboro logos, the way they've done with the cigarette logos on the rally cars. Anyway, this kit's about 80% new, uh, so you get all of the sprues that are new to this kit uh, shown at the show here. And again, being that new, it's uh, I'm surprised. Uh, most modified reissues don't have quite that many new parts to it. This is almost a completely, totally new model kit. So that will be coming out for 120 scale F1 fans. And then we also got this image here, which has the final uh, approved and ready to go into, into production, if it's not already in production right now. Uh, test shots for the Peugeot 306 Maxi. Uh, this will have the 1996 Monte Carlo rally uh, livery. The decals are done. Uh, there's some carbon fiber tucked in underneath the background. I'm going to guess that comes with the detail upset and not with the kit itself, but it could come with the kit itself. It's hard to tell. They didn't seem to have the, the actual like PE set on display. There is, of course, a detail upset for it with the PE in it. Uh, curbside, that's what you know we would expect at this point. Uh, a lot of people are anxiously awaiting this. Uh, there was a, a sort of a resin garage kit of this at one point in time, but uh, there's never been a plastic injected version of it. It's not exactly something that's like way, way up on my list, but I, I do have one on order because why not? Uh, also, there you have the Mitsubishi Lancer Turbo 82 Rally of a Thousand Lakes kit we talked about last week, so they had the both test shot for that. That uh, also, nominally right now, is an August release date in Hong Kong. Um, it is a reissue of a kit with just some the parts we showed you last week added to it so it's not a huge underdoing the 306 maxi kit is a brand new tool so that has been something that's been in works for quite a while and then uh we go into the sort of uh, table of new new right so this is sort of over overviewing all of the kits that have been released as new new kits some of these of course are b max kits because b max and new new are the same company but i want to draw your attention to the bottom row first Bottom left, you have the FINA livery 1991 Tour de Course ST165 Celica Rally reissue. Um, that's been announced before. It's still not available for pre-order in Japan anywhere. It's supposed to come out uh, this month. It was supposed to come out last month. Actually, it's supposed to come out in May. It's been it's one of those slip slide new new releases. Uh, so that will be coming back as well for anybody who's interested in that generation Celica. The new uh, in the middle there, the Bayou sponsored uh, little AE92. Uh, Corolla 11 is the 24 Hours of Spa version of that kit. I bet you didn't even know they ran cars like that at the 24 Hours of Spa. A lot of people who don't have like a historical perspective into racing think of the 24 Hours of Spa as being a GT3 race when actually it raced a whole one bunch of stuff in the past. And uh, this car actually finished third in its class. There's a class obviously for little four-cylinder cars. And finished actually 11th overall. Well, when you think about it, it's not all that bad for that type of car. Um, there will be some new parts tooled up to this, mostly uh, involving the, the spa-specific pieces, including the night racing lights for the front grille, and obviously a new set of decals. The Bayou uh, 11 did race in JTC, but you don't see if they do sort of a two-in-one with this, or what their plans are with that. Next to that, you have the BMW E320 uh, uh, E46 kit. That is a brand new tool from the ground up. I see a lot of people sort of confuse that with the Hasegawa kit. The Hasegawa kit is the previous generation. This would be like 2000 up to 2004 or so, I think it is, or maybe it's 99 to 2004. At any rate, it is a completely different chassis generation in terms of uh, BMW 3 Series. This is set up to be the Dutch Touring Car Championship uh, car for 2001. Again, I would assume the Marlboro livery for this is tucked into the detail upset. Uh, that kit, I think right now is August. We'll see. They did show, uh, and we'll throw those pictures up on the screen here right now, a finalized test shot of the model kit a couple days after the show. So it's ready to go into production. It's fully uh, approved, I believe, licensing-wise, finally. And uh, that kit will be coming out this fall as well. So two uh, brand new tool kits coming out uh, in the sort of near to short-term future. And then we'll go back to that other picture to show you up there on the top right. It's the thing you've been eyeballing the whole time. Yes, it is the built uh, initial test shot of the BMW M8 GTE GTLM car. 
Now, a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, whatever, that, that thing's not used anymore. But it's still racing here in IMSA, WeatherTech in the United States. Yes, it's true the FIA WEC program for it doesn't exist anymore for the World Endurance Challenge. They pulled out, Ford, you know, Ford GT obviously pulled out as well. Uh, but the M8 retail car, the actual real one-to-one -one street car, sells very well here in the United States. So they continue to support the racing program here in the United States as well. So at least through the 2020 IMSA season, and they are back racing uh, along with most of the other series. Uh, the, what is it, the GT World Challenge sponsored by, powered by Amazon Web Services or whatever it is. The old Blank Pain series uh, has not restarted yet. Uh, officially, I believe their first race is next two weekends from now uh, in Italy, or no, it's Portugal, yeah, in Portugal, but IMSA's back racing again, so that, again, brand new tool, uh, it doesn't share anything with anything because there is no M8 <laughs> in existence for anything else. I'd like to say you see that before the end of the year, but, uh, you know, uh, who knows, so... Uh, but it's nice to see that it actually exists in a plastic form now, and it's not just a, an ethereal dream <laughs> of something. Uh, I had a request for mentions of Mustang, real Mustang decals in one of my other videos, because some of the people who have gotten some of the early production decals, we won't mention company names to, for us uh, to save face of people making embarrassingly bad decals, uh, but for real decals, for real, for the Mustang GT4. So I present to you this, which is the upcoming decal sheet for the uh, Multimatic Mod Space Motorsports uh, car that was run at the 2018 Watkins Glen Support Race. Because remember, the, the, the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge, which is now the Michelin Sports Car Challenge, because the tire sponsorship changed, is a support series for IMSA. They do not run on the track with the IMSA WeatherTech Series. They run a, a support race earlier in the weekend. At any rate, in 2018, at Watkins Glen, this is your winning vehicle. So, these decals are actually now available from Diego over Racing Decals 43. Getting them from Spain, as we've talked about in the last time we ordered something from them, does take a little longer than one might like, but it is the world we live in right now and there's nothing anybody can do about that but those decals are available so if you are if that if that livery sparks an interest in you it is something that you can get and that'll take us to kit releases this week which there are just a few because we're sort of cleaning up the end of june over at Aoshima, you have a reissue of this, the 1990 Toyota Estima. This kit got reissued last year. It has a whole bunch of parts added to it to make it into a street civilian Estima. Basically, a whole bunch of outside and a whole bunch of inside parts. Uh, all of the Estimas that Aoshima had done up to last year were upmarket trim and tuners. Or not tuner, but VIP van style. This is an actual factory stock Estima for the first time, and which is kind of an odd choice. But it made sense. They're investing, like, you know... $10,000, $20,000 into a tool from 1991 and reselling it as being a completely new model kit. So, yeah, works out. Uh, over at Tamiya, we got the official global release, which had happened a couple weeks ago, but now the Japan, I want to say Japanese, and uh, Japan, and the word got stuck. The Japanese release of the Porsche 934 Valiant 112 scale kit. So this is the same 112 scale kit as the uh, Jägermeister kit is, just has a different set of decals in it. But a reissue of that for people who want that. That is a basically what amounts to a brand new model kit because this livery didn't exist before. Base model kit, the same. Livery, new, new model kit. See how that works? Uh, over at Hasegawa, we got a couple of things as well. Uh, this, which is the uh, the Evangeline Nerve official business scoop with the Shikanami Asuka Langley resin girl figure. So, Mazda Cosmo, nothing new about that. Different decals for this Evangeline tie-in. And, yes, resin girl figure! And she is permanently stuck in the, hey guys, come on, pose. So, know that going in. Uh, yeah, I mean, it adds like $5 to the cost of the kit for the licensing and the resin figure, but... Uh, and there were so, a lot of people who saw this be announced back at what should have been Shizuka, because this is one of the should have been Shizuka kits, and uh, we're very, very excited about this sort of tie-in with Evangeline and this uh, this uh, anime figure specifically, so that kit is out there if you're interested. And then also from Hasegawa, speaking of figures, this set of 80s girls figures, now these are not resin, these are actually injected molded girls. Uh, this is the eighth in the series of these injected plastic figures. Uh, these young ladies appear to be stuck in some part of Japan that is also Austria or Switzerland. Um, mm -hmm. 
So, uh, they are dressed as you see. Uh, the girl in the, what we would normally consider to be a Catholic schoolgirl outfit does have sort of a weird pigeon-toed <laughs> knee figure pose there. Eh, whatever. But that's out there for anybody who's looking for 124 scale figures for their dioramas and whatnot. And then last but not least for this video is this, the reissue of the Platts New New B-Max BMW M6 GT3 and its Falcon livery. And this kit is the one that uh, they put window masks into. So they needed to rerun the 24-hour race car anyway. <coughs> because we talked about the 24-hour car for just for Nuremberg Nowhere else. But the Nuremberg has those fender vents over the front wheels for uh, helping the brake cooling. Uh, they're in this kit. They're also in the Team Italia kit. They those kits were very very desirable because of the fact that they have those front fender vents and there are several liveries of this kit that exist for VLN for Nuremberg and things like that from Frankie and other people and you could not build them because you you know or at least you could not build them accurately because they didn't have the fender vents in them so that reaches this is what that reaches about this is a th still got the three one livery where it's got the you know production car the presentation on the box art. It also has the livery inside for the VLN series, which is the Nuremberg Ring only race series that runs, as well as the 24 Hours of Nuremberg Ring, uh, Zurich race, um, but window masks. So anybody who knows these kits knows that they come with like a black decal thing for the inside of the windows. A lot of people hate them. I'm guessing most people have never even tried to use them, but whatever that case may be. The only way to tell this kit from the other kit is that little blurb that was up there underneath the word BMW, the little red, uh, in yellow Japanese writing. So if you want window masks for uh, M6, you don't actually already own a, a Falcon M6, hey, now we got a, a solution for you. I mean, obviously, uh, I think Hero Boy does a set. Uh, I'm pretty sure Zumon just did, announced a set. Um, Deco Cost does a set. There's plenty of ways to get window masks if you already have an M6, but if you don't and you want one, this kit has window masks in them already, and you don't have to spend another seven, eight bucks with some other vendor. And then the last thing we'll talk about real quick, uh, we had uh, a couple, three videos ago when I was talking about the reissue of the AMT 1988 Mustang GT. I kept saying incorrectly that the somehow the MPC kit jumped a year from 1987 into 1988 when the kit was reissued by AMT after the merger. Uh, Mark Taylor, friend of mine, was kind enough to point out that I was wildly incorrect about that. And one of the things I've always sort of prided this show about was that the information is correct, not necessarily that the host is correct. The host can always learn things. So I will personally admit to, I didn't do the most basic thing, which is doing a Google image search of the kit. I looked on Scalemates, I looked at some other references. Everyone always listed the red box R cars being a 1987, and magically it was a 1988 when it was reissued at AMT. Well, I actually did the Google image search after he mentioned it, and uh, yeah. This era of MPC kits had a cellophane wrapper on a cellophane wrapper for the date code. Made it very easy for them to change the box art without having to actually label the box art. You know, 23, uh, what, 32 years later, it's kind of a little confusing because most of the boxes don't have the cellophane around the cellophane anymore. Those little date codes have gotten ripped off over the course of the years, or most of these kits aren't even factory sealed anymore. You know how hard it is to find a factory sealed 88 Mustang kit? Uh, so I've gone to Scalemates, and I've made the year corrections with the kits on there so that in the future people will not make that same mistake. And again, thanks to Mark for pointing out our blunder. There actually are a couple of parts about the 1988 kit that were different from the 1987 kit. Uh, he also reported in his comment that they've ungated some of the earlier Fox body parts into that kit as well. So, uh, again, if, uh, you know, we just want to make sure that we are more uh, right around here than we are about the host being right sometimes. So, that, guys, will wrap this video up. We hope you guys had a great weekend, and we'll see you on the other side.